प्लीज स्टार्ट मैम वी आर लाइव या ओके हेलो गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल द फेलो डॉक्टर्स uh and welcome to recall session of oral medicine and radiology we'll be discussing the questions that were asked in latest nicet 2023 and uh, according to my uh, analysis most of the questions that were asked related to syndromes okay then uh, radiographic interpretation and most of the questions were related to radiographic appearances seen in the systemic diseases okay and some questions were direct indirect there were some tricky questions where you have to just uh, locate the keyword from the question and according to it you have to give the diagnosis or the correct answer okay so let us start with the questions okay so here is the first question of uh, which of these the de- uh, which of this is the most common non odontogenic tumor in children which increases in size aggressively and involutes by itself in a few years so the options were hemangioma amyloblastoma rhabdomyosarcoma and congenital effluvies of newborn so your answer should be hemangioma okay because hemangioma is basically a vascular anomaly vascular anomaly okay and it is a abnormal proliferation of endothelial cells or endothelium okay it is a abnormal proliferation of endothelium okay and which grows few weeks after the birth okay which grows few weeks after birth and after some years or one year it will it will involute itself okay it will involute itself okay so how will the hemangioma looks look at this so this is a purple nodular swelling that is seen on the tongue the most common sites that the hemangioma occurs are tongue and lips okay so your correct answer is hemangioma okay going on to the next question okay so diagnose the condition as seen in the lateral skull radiograph below okay so here to attempt this question first you will have to look at the radiograph you have to interpret the radiograph uh, what pattern of radial lucency is, is seen in this radiograph so there are multiple punched out radial lucencies seen right now first you have to list out the diseases or the conditions in which these multiple punched out radial lucencies are seen okay so there are three conditions where you will be able to see this multiple myeloma uh, sorry this punched out radial lucencies so first is multiple myeloma second is histiocytosis x okay and here we have two sub types of histiocytosis x okay first is hand schuller christian disease second one is lateral sieb disease okay so in this condition the among given options your correct answer should be multiple myeloma okay because the other options are cranio facial dysostosis mandibular facial dysostosis and pages disease so they are not the correct options multiple myeloma is the correct option okay so just remember the conditions in which the multiple punched out radial lucencies are seen okay you will get the answer next 
the condition seen in the image below can be seen in which of these diseases okay now they have given the options as hemoglobin diseases sickle cell anemia and thalassemia okay iron deficiency anemia and only thalassemia now if you look at the radiograph okay first of all you have to identify the appearance that is seen in the lateral skull radiograph okay so this is hair on end appearance hair on end appearance okay so hair on end appearance basically seen in which of the conditions so it is seen in thalassemia second sickle cell anemia and third chronic iron deficiency anemia now why this appearance is seen so there are widening of diplo spaces in the skull okay and it is due to hyperplasia of bone marrow okay hyperplasia of red bone marrow and this hyperplasia occurs due to altered you can say metabolism in the bone due to anemic condition okay so this is due to hyperplasia of bone marrow you will be able to see this vertical striations that appears like a hair on end appearance right so among these options according to me all the three options are like b b c and d like sickle cell anemia and thalassemia iron deficiency anemia and only thalassemia all the three are correct but most correct option you have to mark right so most correct option or most probable answer is b sickle cell anemia and thalassemia okay next question is all this is true about papillon lefevre syndrome okay all this is true about papillon lefevre syndrome except now except they have given uh, the uh, options it is a rare autosomal recessive disorder okay then pamo plantar keratosis c generalized aggressive periodontitis with early loss of primary and from permanent teeth d option generalized aggressive periodontitis with early loss of primary teeth okay now you have to know the features of papillon lefevre syndrome okay so in what are the features seen in papillon lefevre syndrome okay they are first of all it is autosomal recessive disorder okay second second Pamo plantar keratosis is seen in this third aggressive periodontitis. Aggressive periodontitis is seen with loss of permanent and deciduous teeth and deciduous teeth. okay so among the options which is the correct answer okay so first option we'll see yes it is a rare autosomal recessive disorder second yes it shows pamo plantar keratosis and third option is also correct which tells us generalized aggressive periodontitis with early loss of primary and permanent teeth okay so your correct answer is option d okay because they have asked all the features in papillon lefevre syndrome except so except generalized aggressive periodontitis with a little loss of primary teeth okay this should be your answer next question is consider the following findings so they have uh, given uh, some findings and then they have asked which of these are seen in nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome okay so first you will list out what are the features seen in nevoid basal carcinoma syndrome right so 
first is multiple okcs are seen in carcinoma syndrome second bifid ribs are seen third palmar and plantar pits are seen fourth ectopic calcifications ectopic calcifications of fox cerebri are seen okay now you have to compare the uh, features that are seen in benevoid basal cell carcinoma with the options so they have given c first option they have given as okc second calcified cerebral fox right so these two options are there in our list right these two options are there fourth uh, third option short fourth metatarsal okay so this is not seen in the syndrome fourth is increased head circumference this is also not seen in this syndrome okay and they have given c a option only one only okcs are seen b option is one and two okcs and calcified cerebral fox cerebri are seen so your option correct answer should be option b only one and two are correct right only one and two are correct options okay so if you know correct features of the syndrome you will be able to answer such types of questions okay next question is most common lesion seen in hiv patient with hiv is option a is oral stomatitis oral candidiasis kaposi sarcoma and oral hairy leukoplakia now if you refer if you refer to classification given by european community in 1993 okay they have mentioned their strongly associated lesions with hiv strongly associated lesions with hiv so they have mentioned first as candidiasis second second hairy leukoplakia okay third they have given kaposi sarcoma fourth non hodgkins lymphoma and the last periodontal disease periodontal disease okay so most common opportunistic lesion that is seen in hiv is basically candidiasis okay candidiasis and the rest will follow candidiasis okay so your correct answer should be option b which is oral candidiasis then you have oral hairy leukoplakia then kaposi sarcoma okay but first is oral candidiasis or most common is oral candidiasis okay coming on to the next question in the opg seen below a radio opaque structure which is preventing eruption of the permanent tooth okay which of this cannot be the diagnosis so you have to read this question very carefully okay which of this cannot be the diagnosis okay so you have to just mark the keyword in the questions and then you have to answer it accordingly okay so first we have is the radio group radio opaque structure first keyword second which of this cannot be a diagnosis okay so we got two keywords now here if you look at the radiograph they have marked with arrow that this is a structure which is obstructing eruption of these teeth okay so they have given option as supernumerary tooth compound odontom complex odontom and dentigerous cyst so by looking at the options only you can tell that the correct answer is dentigerous cyst okay because first keyword is radio opaque first of all dentigerous cyst is not radio opaque it is a radio lucent 
uh, lesion and is of course uh, associated with impacted tooth or missing tooth or it uh, re restrict the eruption of the permanent tooth but here in this question okay we have given option as supernumerary tooth it will be radiopaque compound odontom is radiopaque and complex odontom is also a radiopaque structure okay so you are correct and they have asked which of this cannot be the diagnosis so dentigero cyst cannot be a diagnosis okay so ans option uh, correct answer is option d okay next question is the image below shows pathology in right body region of mandible which is rapidly growing okay now you have to just underline the keywords first keyword is right body region of mandible okay then which is rapidly growing rapidly growing so which of these cannot be a differential diagnosis which of these cannot be a differential diagnosis so if you look at the radiograph carefully here this is a radiolucent lesion a big radiolucent lesion and these are the impacted tooth okay here and here okay these are the impacted tooth in the radiolucency okay so your options are dentigero cyst odontogenic keratocyst infection from the deciduous tooth and ameloblastoma so if you uh, go and if you remember the definition of ameloblastoma okay ameloblastoma is what benign tumor and it is slow growing tumor okay yes it is seen in the body of mandible or third molar area is the common site it occurs in mandible most commonly okay but here in this they have clearly mentioned rapidly growing and ameloblastoma is slowly growing benign tumor okay so your correct answer to this question should be ameloblastoma okay ameloblastoma because first option dentigerous cyst also associated with impacted tooth odontogenic keratocyst impacted tooth infection from deciduous teeth meaning radicular cyst it could be radicular cyst also okay and they these all three entities are rapidly growing right so your correct answer should be ameloblastoma this cannot be a differential diagnosis for this uh, question okay next question is gary's osteomyelitis which of these is not true about gary's osteomyelitis okay so first option they have given as it is seen in immunocompromised patients second it is uh, moth radiographic appearance is moth eaten okay c it is seen in children and young adults and d causative organism is staphylococcus aureus now they have asked which of this is true okay so to know which of this is true you should know what are the features seen in gary's osteomyelitis okay so first feature is gary's osteomyelitis is also called as chronic chronic osteomyelitis with proliferative periostitis okay and it is caused in long standing infection long standing infection like carious tooth carious tooth okay and it occurs in mostly children or adults age is what less than 20 years of age okay so of course children and young adults are affected okay then organism which is associated with gary's osteomyelitis is staphylo Staphylo cocci pyogens. 
okay staphylococci pyogens is the most commonly isolated organism uh, from these patients okay uh, there are aureus there are mixed microbes anaerobes uh, are also there but this is the most common uh, microbes which has been isolated okay then what is the radiographic feature radiographic feature is seen onion pill appearance onion pill appearance onion pill appearance okay so we will just uh, rule out what is not true okay about this garry's osteomyelitis so first option they have given it is seen in immunocompromised no okay it is not the correct answer second they have given it is uh, radiographic appearance is moth eaten appearance no uh onion peel appearance is seen in garry's osteomyelitis okay third option they have given as it is seen in children and young adults yes it is a correct option yes okay children and young adults are affected yes b they have given causative organism is staphylococcus aureus no causative organism most commonly isolated is staphylococcus pyogenes okay so a option wrong b option wrong d option wrong so which is true children and young adults are affected in garry's osteomyelitis okay so this completes our uh, questions which were asked in uh, inict exam okay and uh, i would like to uh, make a very important point that uh, dbmci mds experts are the uh, one of the uh, you can say first academy uh, to have solved all the recall questions or recall question paper of inict 2023 okay uh, so if you have any doubts you can connect that us on facebook and telegram okay and post your queries on uh, telegram group okay so thank you so much